This article is a result of my most recent experience, which occurred on October 5, 2016. I was in my normal altered state of consciousness when I saw a card which was in the shape of a tarot card. It was on a bluish background with puffy clouds at the top. There were two lightning bolts on either side of the card towards the top. Down toward the middle of the card on either side were white wings. In the direct middle of the card was a large white horse, and it had two yellow-brown straps underneath its belly lifting it up. I was sending this horse somewhere. When I woke up I was completely confused. This did not appear to have anything to do with the off energy that I write about, but I knew it was of huge importance. I have decided not to make this article in two parts. There are so many aspects of this information, but I decided to keep it in one long article. I tried my best to make it flow properly. My personal experience with white horses. I will begin this article with my personal experience with the white horse followed by research that I was led to, which will give a deep understanding of how this white horse is working with the earth right now. I did not know of a white horse prophecy until I began my research after my experience. I did know of the white horse of the apocalypse, but that was it. As I did my research, I used my clairvoyant ability to connect with my computer. This is something that everyone can do. We all have outer internet on our computers, and we have internet which is our internal computer. I connect both to do my work. I have written about this aspect of our being in a previous article. I have to say that the information I was led to was incredible. Writing this article has been a journey for me, as it connected many personal dots. I had to think way back in my past to remember any connection to a white horse. I then remembered that I had a reading by a local well-known psychic right after my walk-in experience. She was one of three psychics that have ever been able to read me. This reading occurred in the fall of 2008. It started off with me putting my hands into hers. The energy that passed between us was startling to me. She saw two white horses running towards her at full speed ahead. She said she had to jump out of their way or they would have run her over. She told me that these horses of mine were on a big mission, and they were running out of time. She told me this was the first time she has ever experienced this in a reading. She had to stop for a minute to get back into her center. The next thing she said was I would play a role in helping humanity with the shift, but I would not really begin my work until sometime after 2012. I had zero idea what she was talking about back then, but she was completely correct. It was only during the month of October 2016 did I find out what one of my white horses was for. I did not understand why I was sending one of my white horses away. I could tell it was going up and into the sky. It was connected to the wind element because I saw two wings and it was connected to fire or electricity because I saw two lightning bolts on either side of the card towards the top corners. Then something absolutely amazing happened to me. It is so incredible that you just can't make this stuff up. I was in a session with one of my clients. Her name is Randy Gerber. It was her first session with me. What she told me at the very beginning of the session blew my mind. It was all I could do to maintain my composure. She was telling me of her recent experiences that she felt I could explain for her. She told me that a white horse came to her during a very deep meditation. The dates she experienced this were in line with mine and the rest of her vision was right in line with my other articles, which she had not read yet. She had no idea that I had just had an experience with my white horse. I was so excited that I could not write all that she was saying fast enough. I was almost shaking with excitement. She was kind enough to write her experience down for me, and I have decided to include her entire vision in my article. Randy's white horse experience told in her own words. My vision or dream began on October 5, 2016 and finished on October 8, 2016. 
The first part of my vision began on October 5, 2016. I was doing an afternoon meditation when a beautiful white horse ran across a green grass field and came right up to my face and looked into my eyes. My feeling was that it was a wild horse, but it had come just to see me and let me know that it was here and ready for me. Then it turned and ran back into the horizon. I did not really know what the horse meant at that time. Three nights later on October 8, 2016, I was meditating before bed. I had the distinct feeling that it was time. I instinctively knew that this meant it was now time to fully integrate myself with my higher self and become one with all aspects of myself. This I had spent most of September preparing for and it was now time to do it. In my vision, my higher self embraced me with total unconditional love. She accepted all aspects of me just as I was, with no judgment and complete unconditional love. This was a lovely feeling and a beautiful and appropriate union. I was by this point near asleep and my unconscious mind took over the vision and it became more like a dream. In this dream the white horse immediately returned, and I knew that I was then ready to ride her. She also knew it was time and came willingly and ready for this as well. I hopped on her back, and with the passion and strength of a warrior, I began to run. As I ran, I saw a portal that I was to enter. I saw the numbers 888 and 999. I instinctively knew that this was the 999 portal. I saw Earth on one side of the portal surrounded in a white crystal energy. Earth went through the portal with me, and then I saw her surrounded in a gorgeous golden light, and she had a crown on her head. There she sat glowing. I also saw my beautiful horse become a unicorn. This was the end of the dream, at least as far as I could remember. Upon awaking, I received a download explaining the dream including parts that I didn't see or remember. I was told that Earth had been in a time loop which was represented by the 888. Yet it was an 8 on its side which was like the infinity symbol. This is also represented by the hourglass on its side. When the hourglass was tipped on its side time would stop. This is where Earth had been for a long time I sensed. After this experience on the night of October 8th, I was told the 999 meant time had once again started. I was also told that October represented the 8th month because October means 8, not 10, on the lunar calendar. I also had a feeling that the horse represented the white horse of the apocalypse, and I was the rider, and this would begin the unveiling. Truthfully, I didn't believe this at the time and disregarded it as my own thought and not truth. It seemed too far-fetched to me until later, that thought I had was validated by the one who sent me the horse without me admitting that this feeling had come to me. After this validation, I was able to accept this truth and my mission as the rider of the apocalyptic white horse. During this download, I also saw the appearance of a triangle made of three dots that I was told represented three daughters or three daughters. This led into the next dream that I would have three times after this day, that was part of my next mission. The one thing that I wrote down during our session is that she saw wings appear on her horse at one point. Holy crap on a cracker. I found the rider of the white horse I sent out. I am telling ya, you can't make this stuff up. I know this is real but at the same time, it feels unreal. As the ancients have taught. All is but a dream. Yeah, I know what they mean now, wow. Now, that I understood how important this white horse is, I needed to connect my inner net, heart, with my outer net, computer, and dive deeper into this. What is the great purpose of this white horse and what have others written about it? I was positive that humanity and the earth had been waiting for this horse and I remembered how my horses were running out of time and ran the psychic over. Research on White Horse Prophecy Begins The first thing I did was Google White Horse Prophecy just for fun. I found the prophecy of the Eighth Fire by accident this time last year, so why not a White Horse Prophecy? 
I was not really expecting to find anything so easily, but I did. What I found was a weird but interesting Mormon connection. I decided to put that aspect on hold, and I dove into what I am familiar with, which is the theology of the four writers of the Apocalypse. This teaching is not to be taken in the literal physical sense. It has a deeper meaning that is taking place on the astral level of the planet. I never really fully understood this teaching until I had my experience. The symbology of my simple white horse card downloaded a bunch of information into me that I need to back up with physical research. White Horse Prophecy and the Revelation of St. John the Divine, Chapter 6-1, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see, and I saw, and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. The rider has borrowed the bow from Sagittarius the centaur, a half-horse, half-man creature. In the constellations, Sagittarius follows after Scorpio. The centaur has turned around and points his arrow at a star called Antares, which is at the heart of the scorpion that gives the sun the kiss of death. A scorpion sting is in the shape of a pair of lips. This is where Judas, Scorpio, betrays Jesus, the Son, with a kiss before he goes to his death during the winter solstice in Capricorn, the goat. The bow symbolizes that he plans to conquer death. He will be resurrected. The connection to Scorpio is important here. The rider of the white horse will enter through the center of our universe. Scorpio is our eighth sign of the zodiac and the tail of Scorpio points to the center of our universe, which is the thirteenth gate, which I have written many articles about. Basically, the white horse will go through the center of infinity that is connected to our planet Earth and our local universe. Now, I know all of you that know your astrotheology are saying that the third horse is Scorpio, and I agree, but they are all connected. My vision was only of the first horse which is the white horse. Will we experience all four? I don't know, this has never happened before. We are writing the script as we go. Perhaps we will not need all four horses. Or perhaps the parable of the four horses of the apocalypse was written in reverse order for those with eyes to see and not to be taken literally. And perhaps we have already experienced the other three horses. I honestly don't know yet. Only time will tell us, as we watch this unfold in our physical world. Okay, back to the biblical meaning of our beautiful white horse. One symbol representing Sagittarius is the bow. The bow is an instrument for extending the reach, for sending at great speed. Sagittarius is a fire sign, which explains why I saw lightning bolts. It also explains why my horses were running at great speed. This is the essence of the astrological sign of Sagittarius, the sign that is associated with higher learning, philosophy, religious fervor, law, and cultural exchanges. Vedic Studies According to the Vedic studies of the Zodiac, we find the following description of Sagittarius. Sagittarius is lightning in the atmosphere. Sagittarius is a bow, Danis, or a bow and arrow. The bow is a symbol of the rainbow and the arrow of lightning. The horse, with which this sign is associated, is a symbol of prana or atmospheric force. Lightning is associated with law and justice that this sign indicates. Lightning is mutable or dual-natured, visvabhava, fire because it is always changing. It describes what my card was with the lightning in the sky. The sky is the atmosphere. The lightning being connected to law and justice is in the Mormon connection, which I will get to later in the article. There is science to the lightning as well, which I will cover later as well. This information is immense. After Randy was riding the white horse, she had an experience of seeing the earth covered in rainbow energy. Notice the word bow in rainbow. This energy is being delivered by the bow of Sagittarius. Ironically, 
She had this experience on my birthday which was October 30th. October 30th this year, was a 13 day in numerology. Normally you would reduce further, but my instincts say not this time. It is all connected to Scorpio. As I said, you can reduce the number 13 down further to a 4. She actually had experiences with the number 4 on October 30th as well. But I am not going to include them in this article, because it would become too confusing. Her experience is right in line with verdict information. She sent her visions and experiences to me before I started to do any research. In my humble opinion, when I look at our actual experiences combined with the research, it appears that the first phase of the white horse is in process now. The atmosphere was charged during the month of October with a new rainbow electrical energy. This rainbow energy is the first phase that will lead the Earth to the full connection to the 13th gate. Mormon Connection Now, let's get to the Mormon connection to the White Horse prophecy. In 1843, Joseph Smith, who is the founder of the Church of the Latter-day Saints, apparently delivered the information about a White Horse prophecy. He stated to the effect that when the U.S. Constitution was hanging by a thread, the Mormon people would rise up and save the nation. This is how Brigham Young reportedly explained it in 1854, will the Constitution be destroyed? No, it will be held inviolate by this people, and, as Joseph Smith said, the time will come when the destiny of the nation will hang upon a single thread. At that critical juncture, his people will step forth and save it from the threatened destruction. I need to state, that this quote has not been substantiated by any historical research and is not accepted as church doctrine. However, while this is not to be taken in the literal sense, I see truth in here. When I tune into this piece of information, it feels that Joseph Smith had a vision as I did, but he did not apply universal knowledge of the stars to his information. Instead, his ego got in the way, and he believed his religion would fly in and save the day for America. It's not all about America. It's about the planet as a whole. What I feel he got right was that the white horse he may have seen in his vision is connected to the fire sign of Sagittarius. As we have learned, this sign is associated with legal matters, philosophy, intuition, expansion of consciousness, etc. Sagittarius is the ninth sign, and we are in a nine year. This coincides with the previous articles I have written about the nine year we are in, where I outlined our journey to the upper section of infinity, eight, which is higher consciousness. Sagittarius is a fire sign which goes in line with the Aoth energy that is now present on the planet. As I have previously written about, this year is the time where the fire element of Aoth is coming in. White Horse and our Upper Atmosphere Now, we will explore what the White Horse will ultimately form in our atmosphere. For this aspect, I turn to my study of Tibetan Bon Buddhism and Earth Science, along with something I saw clairvoyantly last year. I will begin with what Andrea Covington Melanie, who was my Rising Frequencies business partner and best friend, clairvoyantly saw. Actually we have two other close friends of ours that saw the same thing during the same time period. It was quite shocking to us, and we did a radio show on this, but did not publish it on YouTube. I decided it was too controversial and people were not ready for it. I didn't want to deal with people's egos getting angry. This show was recorded on Blog Talk Radio. We discussed the information about the actual souls on this planet. What people in the West have been taught and led to believe about what the soul is, is flat out wrong. Tibetan Buddhism in the Bon tradition has it correct. I saw it with my own eyes, and I wasn't ready for what I saw. It was the biggest eye opener for me. I had to let go of my previous subconscious programming and kind of mourn what I thought the soul was. I am still not completely comfortable discussing this. It would be an entire article, and I still don't think people are ready. After seeing what I saw, 
I don't think that while we are in our current human bodies, that we can ever really understand the full concept of what a soul is and what a soul does. I will only go into as much detail as needed for this particular article. First, we saw what what a soul actually looks like and could see what its ultimate purpose is. Remember what we feel is correct is at our current level of understanding. This will definitely change for us as we grow in light and awareness. We were able to sit with this new information for a short period of time. Then we saw the soul change purpose, and next we saw a line of energy coming from people's crown chakra, top of the head, connecting them to God, Source. However, we did not see one for the planet, only for people. I will get back to this and tie it all in with the white horse. But for now, I want to continue with the Tibetan aspect. It really shows how all information is synchronistic and explains the same concepts, just with a different flair according to the culture. Tibetan Wind Horse In Tibetan Buddhism, there is a wind horse, which is a mythical creature that carries the energy of prayers to the heavens. Soul or spirit is known as the breath or your inner wind. Literally wind horse. This wind horse is connected to the fifth element which the Tibetans teach as the space element. Space is vast and without limits. This is the essence of the space element. In the West, it is known as the ether. This aspect of my vision was represented by the blue background with the clouds. In the Tibetan tradition, this is how the space or ether element is drawn. The wind horse or spirit energy going up to the heavens was represented in my vision as the wings on either side of the horse. The practitioners of Tibetan Bon Buddhism, which I am a part of, use prayer flags to raise our wind horse energy for the benefit of ourselves and the benefit of all sentient beings. The prayer flags are the color of the five elements that are found in our body. They are called the five pure lights. These lights make up the rainbow body, which is the highest level of achievement. Remember Randy had the vision of the rainbow energy covering the planet after she received the white horse I sent. I will tie this in later. My card that I had in my vision had four elements of the flags, blue and clouds is space or ether, white is wind, red, lightning, is fire, yellow is earth which were the yellow-brown straps lifting my horse to the earth. I don't recall seeing any green in my vision card. Green represents the element of water. However, I have been seeing a lot of green energy lately. Especially in my house. I feel this color green will play a role later. I think it is the color of the energy that the Aoth will mutate into. The Mu Cord, the Heavenly Rope. I would like to return to the line of energy that we saw coming from people's heads. I called it a cord. That was the first word that popped into my wee brain. I didn't know why until I was researching the Tibetan connection to my vision. I discovered by sheer accident, of course everything happens for a reason, the name of a cord that the Tibetan bond teaches about. Remember how I discussed how you can connect your internet to your outer computer's internet? Well, I know this is how I found this information. The Tibetan name for the cord we saw is Muthagsuthag, also known as the Mu cord. The phrase for heavenly rope in Tibetan is Muthagsuthag. As for the word Muthag, I believe it to be closely connected to the Tibetan word for rainbow, Vjav. A rainbow could well be understood by early societies as a rope connecting heaven to earth a rope sent down by the heavenly gods. Literally, Muthag means the heavenly god's rope. According to Tibetan literature, when the Tibetan king Tsenpo died, he looked like a rope under the rainbow, and he went up to the heavens along the Muthag. In basic terms, the Mu cord is the heavenly rope that connects us to God and the upper realms. It is the rope we climb to our next incarnations. The Tibetans have written in their literature how this rope disappeared in our distant past. They make no mention of its return, however, my inner knowing tells me this is why they do the prayer flag practice to raise the wind horse. It is now working, 
as we saw the cords back at the tops of people's heads last year, at least on an energetic level. But, my wind horse vision is connected to the Earth's mucord. This teaching is found in various other mythology stories, and I would love to cover them all, but this article is long enough as it is. I don't think people really understood how the other mythological teachings were connected to our mucords, as well as the Earth's mucords. I feel that aspect was lost over the hundreds of years to those of us in the West. Birkeland Currents Now, we are going to leave the Tibetan information and dive into Earth science for a bit. This aspect really brings to light what is occurring. For this aspect, I once again had to plunge back into my past to remember some other things I have learned. I have always been interested in the physics side of ether and how it works within our planet. One of the concepts I came across was Birkeland Currents. This is a very in-depth study, but basically they are two different types of lightning bolts, electricity, that wrap around each other and make a rope. This is the most basic way of describing this. So there you have the science behind the mucord, which as we learned is the heavenly rope. This is the lightning in my vision, and I saw two bolts, one for each part of the rope or cord, and one for each of the two plasma currents that make up a Birkeland current. It's like an electrical rope, each of the two plasma currents that make up a Birkeland current. It's like an electrical cord we use to plug in our appliances. People are now, on an energetic level, plugged into God, and now it is the Earth's turn. Now, what I clairvoyantly see is there are many different types of Birkeland current ropes. The one for people is different from the one the planet is trying to form. The one people have is energetically different for each person, and it goes through the top of the head and connects in the heart. I do not think these heavenly ropes are fully turned on yet. I would like to take the concept of the Birkeland currents and the mucord one step further and discuss what this means to our current physical bodies. We discussed how the planet's white wind horse is being raised, but I would like to talk about our inner white wind horse that is also rising. Remember earlier in this article, the psychic guy went to saw two white horses running at her. One horse is for people on the planet and the second is for the earth. I can see that each person has the astral mucord in place, but it has not been fully turned on. In other words, we are not plugged in yet, and you could say that the switch has not been flipped on. We have our energetic heavenly rope, mucord, which science calls a Birkeland current that runs up our spine and exits from our crown chakra, and then connects to the upper realms. As I stated, this cord was cut short. In the past it ended at the crown. The energy that runs up our spine is called Kundalini energy. When the Kundalini energy extends beyond the crown, it then becomes the mucord or heavenly rope. We all have physical Kundalini right now, but we only have the energetic mucord. Our physical Kundalini is just the beginning for us. The next step is for our physical Kundalini to continue out the top of our heads to form a physical mucord. Ancient Egypt Birkeland Current Knowledge this can actually be seen in the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic drawing of the Dentra light. If you look at the base of the light bulb, you will see what looks like a flower. That is a lotus blossom, which represents our crown chakra. The light bulb is what will extend from our crown when we are fully turned on. Inside the bulb you can see a snake, which is what our physical kundalini will turn into, the mucord. If you follow the cord that is attached to the base of the lotus, you will notice it runs underneath the light bulb and connects to a jed. The symbol of the jed means many things, but one of the uses is to bring the dead back to life. We are the dead, without our heavenly ropes connected, we are spiritually dead. These days are ending. Once this connection is fully made in the physical for us and for the planet, we will be what is known as resurrected. We will have arisen from the ashes. I find the word light bulb very interesting. And there is a higher teaching here, as there is with everything. The word bulb, 
is also used to describe a plant bulb. The lotus flower is connected with our inner light. Now I see why they are called light bulbs, and why the dendral light is drawn the way it is. I have also read accounts where the ancient Egyptians could power up their inner and outer light bulb to the level that they could light up the inside of the temples during initiations. This was a requirement to move on. Of course this was before the mucord was lost. But, this is what we are returning to. To give a very short summary, I saw a vision of a tarot-shaped card which shows how the white horse is returning to charge our Earth's atmosphere with rainbow energy in the form of a mucord, heavenly rope. This can be seen as the return for humanity to possibly obtain the rainbow body. Or, also known as the level of the thirteenth gate of Ephesus. Our justice, legal, political consciousness will change. It is my inner feeling that when the planet's physical, not astral, vibration reaches a certain frequency, it will naturally attract the energetic mucord and the two will connect. When will this mucord for humans be fully turned on, and when will the Earth receive its mucord? I have no idea. I do feel that when both of these connections are made, you will not even remember reading this article. I do also feel that not all will participate in this, and everything you do now to prepare yourself is important. I kinda see once this connection is made, it is the deadline for this planet. Right now it is the physical that is important, which means your physical spiritual practices should be your top priority. You cannot think yourself into enlightenment. Notice the word light in enlightenment. We are human dentra light bulbs. When we are fully turned on we will have enlightenment. I suggest that you jump on your inner white wind horse and ride like the wind to infinity and beyond. Lisa